Coming up on Winning Bets, I've got three Thursday night football bets and three NASCAR bets for you. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Jason Sabatis with Winning Bets. Thanks for kicking off your Thursday with me. Before I roll out these six bets for you, let's go ahead and recap yesterday. As you can see here on the tweet, we went 2-2, two and two, lost 1.53 units, but we're overall we're still up 0.9 units on the week, so that's good. Frustrating part about losing yesterday was Rublev. Man, he literally gave up. Second set, he was down 4-1, and he just mailed it in and bagged. I mean, the games went from being competitive, a lot of deuces, you know, a lot of 40-30s, to just him get, you really just laid over and just got rolled by Titi Pass. So that was absolutely frustrating. Bounced back nicely, though. Got the Lopez and Tanaka over their strikeout total, so that was good. And then our three-legged MLB teaser. The one, t- the leg that we lost was Yankees plus three and a half. Unreal that they got smashed, losing by four runs. So that one definitely tripped us up. Like I said, we're still positive on the week. We'll take those positives, and we'll roll them here into Thursday night, and we'll look to cash some, some of these bets. All right, let's do that. Let's jump on into Thursday night football. We got the Buccaneers versus the Bears. I think this will be a really good game. The Bears really good. Bucks are seem to be good of the two teams. I definitely think the Bucks are definitely of the, you know the better of the two teams. But you can never count the Bears out. They got Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack can absolutely wreck a game. But I found three prop bets. You guys know how I generally think this game is going because they're giving away twenty five thousand dollars over on the Fox Bet Super Six app, where I really break that down. That game along those six questions gave you a winner, gave you who I thought was going to do the spread. So these are actually prop bets because you know, how again, how I think the actual game's going to go. If you haven't watched that video yet, make sure you do and get your picks in for a chance to win $25,000. But the first prop bet I've got here is focused around the tight ends. And let's look at the Bears defending the tight ends. So against the Lions, they gave up 56 yards. Against the Giants, they gave up 65 yards. Against the Falcons, I guess they didn't use their tight ends that much. They only gave up seven yards. And then they in their last game here, most recently against the Colts, they gave up a combined 31 yards to their tight ends. The Buccaneers' tight ends are getting 35% of the targets, or 30. They've gotten 35 targets, which is 22.5% overall. They're getting 237 yards on the season, which is 21%. And then they've gotten three of the 11 passing TDs, which is 27%. What I like here too is of Tom Brady's 282 passing yards, 59 per game are going towards the tight end. So what I like here is Rob Gronkowski over 35.5 receiving yards comes in at minus 134, and that's over our friends at FanDuel. That's what the FD means. DraftKings has this at 37.5 and and at better odds at even money, but I'm going to go ahead and make this bet at FanDuel because you get two less yards, and if you don't think two less yards matters... All I can do is remind you of our Todd Gurley prop the other night on uh, Monday Night Football. We would have lost if we were in dire need of looking for two more yards. So I'm going to play it safe. Go ahead and give me 35.5 yards, and that's at minus 134 over at FanDuel. I'm going to give you guys another bet. It won't count for our official stats, but I've got money on it, so I'm just going to tell it to you. And if you guys want to follow me on it, cool. But in terms of our stats here on Winning Bets, it won't be a part of it. So the Bears have given up three passing TDs this season. All three passing TDs have been to tight ends. As I just told you, the the Buccaneers have gotten three passing touchdowns so far this season uh, from from, uh, their tight ends, three of the 11. I'm going to go ahead and say Rob Gronkowski to score is at plus 165, and I made that bet over at DraftKings. So if you want to follow me there, you got to remember, no O.J. Howard. That's why I'm doing this Rob Gronkowski receiving yards and Rob Gronkowski touchdown. He's now the number one tight end on this offense. We know he has that chemistry. You know Brady loves him. It's Thursday night football. What a game for him to go ahead and burst onto the scene. So let's do it. Let's go Gronkowski. All right, next prop bet of Rob in this game is going to be Brady TD passes. In the four games this season, he's thrown five, one, three, and two. They've got his over-under at 1.5. I was really amazed by that. So go ahead and give me Brady touchdown passes over 1.5, and that's at minus 137 over at DraftKings. Again, that's what the DK is over at DraftKings. So minus 137 of over 1.5 touchdowns. Come on, Brady. Throw that ball in the end zone. Let me get Gronk get one of them. Can Gronk get one of them? Please, thank you very much. 
All right, one more prop bet, and let's look at Allen Robinson receiving yards. In the four games this season, he's caught 74 yards, 33 yards. His last two games have been 123 and 101 yards. That's an average of 82 point game, 82 uh, per game. He's got 41 targets on the season. That's almost nearly twice as more targets than the next guy on the receiving team, so that's incredible. So I'm going to go ahead and do Allen Robinson over 70.5 receiving yards. And that comes in at minus 112. And again, that's over at DraftKings. And guys, this is why you actually have to line shop, right? There's four books in the state of Illinois where I live. And I you know, shop all around. This same 70.5 over at uh, DraftKings at minus 112. If you go look it up on FanDuel, it's 75.5. And basically the same odds at minus 110. So same odds, but FanDuel has you needing to get five more extra yards. This is why you've got to shop. And this is why I really like that suggestion that we got from Matt that said, hey, when I give you guys the bet, go ahead and include the book that I get it from because I just love the suggestion. And, you know, here's a major difference uh, between FanDuel and DraftKings. Five extra yards. Whew, that's really major. So make sure you make this bet at DraftKings. You only have to get 70.5 yards. All right, let's flip it over now to NASCAR. We're back at a Roval track. Super easy road course. A lot easier to predict. That last year's last week's mayhem of Talladega tripped us up one, but I found three prop bets that I think we can really get to cash and we'll get back on our winning ways in NASCAR like we have the majority of the season. The first one is Austin Dillon versus Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Austin Dillon starts six. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. starts dead last. Road courses, that is everything. Look at that discrepancy in just starting position. That's a huge amount for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to overcome. So Austin Dillon over Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is at minus 139. The fact that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. crashed our bet last week, and if he actually makes up this difference and crashes this bet, I may need a new cell phone. My cell phone may be thrown all the way across the room and hit the wall if Ricky Stenhouse Jr. makes me lose this bet. I will be really, really <laughs> irritated and really upset. So come on, Austin Dillon. Just be cool. And you're in the playoff. You're a playoff driver. I mean, just come on. Be cool, man. All right, next one here is going to be Alex Bowman versus Kurt Busch. Alex Bowman's average finish here is three, and he's got two top fives here at the Roval, and he starts fifth. Kurt Busch's average finish here at the Roval is 12.5. He starts 10th, and then he's already clinched a spot in the next round of the playoffs. So I don't think he's going to be driving as hard as these other guys trying to get into the next round of the playoffs. So I've got Alex Bowman over Kurt Busch at minus 122. And then the next one here is Chase Elliott over or Chase Elliott versus Martin Truex Jr. Look, Chase Elliott loves, loves the Robles. He's finished here at the Roval. He's got a first place and a sixth place finish. And he also won the road course earlier this season over at Daytona. So just a guy that loves it. He starts second. His odds at winning this race are at plus 250 last time I looked. I think I saw the next guys at plus 800. And there's a reason why this guy is a huge, huge favorite to win this race. Loves the Robles. Martin Truex Jr., his finishes here at the Roval are 7th and 14th. And he finished third earlier this season at the Daytona Road Course. And he'll be starting seventh. I'm going ahead and taking Elliott over Martin Truex Jr. And that one comes in at minus 139. So those are the three NASCAR bets. Those are the three Thursday night football bets. I've got a full breakdown of this NASCAR race coming up. As soon as I hop off here, I'm going to make the... Uh, I'm going to film the video and do the recording for our NASCAR bets where we submit our picks to win lots of cash over there. So if you want a more thorough breakdown of these NASCAR bets, you watch that video and there will definitely be a more in-depth breakdown there of this coming uh, NASCAR race. All right, guys, good luck to us. we got three prop bets in there. I love these prop bets. I think they're all going to cash. I love these NASCAR bets. Jump on board. Go ahead and like this video if you're going to follow me on these bets. And let's have ourselves a nice bounce back good Thursday. Let's do it. Have yourselves a day, and I'll see you guys later on. I'm Jason Mattis. Thanks for watching this episode of Winning Bets. I'm Jason Mattis. I'll see you again when we are celebrating the wins and making more winning bets. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more winning bets.